co-founder of Shields and Stripes, owner of 5x5 Performance Therapy, Boston University academic mentor, passionate occupational therapist, yoga instructor, certified mental health, integrative medicine provider, Air Force veteran, special operations military spouse, mom, daughter, little sister of a Black Hawk pilot, and big sister of an awesome human with disabilities, Dr. Jennifer Burns' mission in life is simple, to save lives and foster happiness. She focuses on providing the care that veterans, law enforcement, first responders, and their families deserve and need. Thank you so much, Dr. Jennifer Byrne, for joining us here in Aware Now, sharing this space to share your story. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. So let's begin this way. In choosing a career of service, you were influenced early on in your life by your brothers. You cared for your younger brother who had special needs. Jen, can you share this story and how that guided you the way that it did in your career of choice? Ricky is his name. Ricky has had such a huge impact in my life from a very, very early phase in life. My parents were very specific in telling us Ricky is with our family for a reason. Um, he's here to teach you. You can teach him, but make sure that you learn lessons from one another. So it was really embedded in me in a very young age that not only did I protect my brother, but I needed to learn from him. Um, and he is less than two years younger than me. So very, very close. We are very close. Um, so Ricky has, Ricky was born with microcephaly in 1992. So if you remember back when Zika virus was kind of like a big conversation, a lot of younger, a lot of babies were being born with microcephaly because of Zika virus. Well, back in 1992, my parents were in their 30s. Ricky was their third kid. And they had no idea what microcephaly was or how to care for a child with significant disabilities. Um, so Ricky was born and came into our life and, and my parents did an incredible job very early on getting him set up with all of the support that he needed to be able to participate in life with his siblings, with his friends at school. Um, so in that, what, you know, he had a team of therapists, speech therapists, occupational therapists, physical therapists. And I didn't know what OT was when I was younger. I just remember this woman coming in and inviting me to do like art projects with Ricky and kind of like almost teaching me how to be an OT as his sister without me even knowing what OT was. So adapting his environment, making buttons. So instead of having to turn on the radio, he could just press it in his room. So all of these things to really just be super creative to maximize Ricky's life and make him happy. Um, so again, I didn't, I didn't have any idea what OT was until I, and I didn't know what I wanted to be. Um, so I went to my college orientation and I met one of my now best friends. And I was like, well, what are you majoring in? She was like, occupational therapy. I was like, oh, tell me about that. And she just basically was like, you can be creative. It's in the medical field. And you get to help people live happy lives. That's like our whole goal is to just help, help people live uh, their happiest life. So I was like, that sounds very familiar. Went back and I was like, mom, was Sharon an occupational therapist? And she was like, she is. So um, I was influenced early on without even without without even knowing what OT was. Wow, um, I love that story about how organically it's not you seeking something out; it almost sought you out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so let's let's talk about your other brother. Let's talk about your older brother who joined the army. Mm -hmm. He influenced you as well. Can you tell us about your call? to serve that led you to join the ROTC while attending the University of New Hampshire? I can, yes. Um, so as much as Ricky, you know, was an influence, my older brother absolutely was as well. Both of them remain uh, two of the best friends that I'll ever have. Now, this is going to be interesting. So um, life got a little messy 
when I was like 10, 11, 12, when my parents decided to divorce, um, my brother and I had too much freedom as, as teenagers. So this, I promise this will circle back. He ended up getting into a little bit of trouble. I was rebelling at a pretty young age. Um, and so in our teenager years, we were kind of troublemakers. Um, I was still able to get good grades and stay focused and care for my brother. Um, but I wasn't really doing the things that I needed to be doing as a teenager. I was drinking already at a very young age. So my brother ended up getting into some trouble and he was basically like, I college isn't for me. I'm going to join the army. So I was 14 when he joined the army and I watched it shape him. All of a sudden, he he's a very intelligent human being. So he's a Black Hawk pilot now. He's one of the youngest and most accomplished Black Hawk pilots in the state of Connecticut. He just needed something to focus on and he just needed to find something that he loved. And he found that in the army. He, he found structure when we didn't have structure. He found mentorship. He found people who were willing um, to kind of pull him out of that phase he was in and put him on a professional direction. So he was, um, you know, he got his his direction very early on. I was still a little crazy. And I was like, well, I guess I'll just enlist in the army like you, Jeff. Um, and he caught wind of that, kind of sat on it for a day. And then he pulled me out of um, a day of high school, my senior day or my senior year of high school. He pulled me out of school one day and he made me shadow him. And I didn't love it. <laughs> and uh, he made me shadow one of like the enlisted technicians and he he sat me down and he was like I I agree that you you would do very well in the military but you're gonna you're gonna go to college you're gonna be an officer and you're gonna be an officer in the air force because I want you to go somewhere where I know that they will take care of my little sister and the air force takes care of their people very well so I was like okay <laughs> I guess I'll do that <laughs> so that's where uh, my brother's influence came from. So, I mean, we didn't, we both didn't come from military parents by any means. I think we just, we have drive, we have motivation. We had to grow up pretty early in our lives. Mm -hmm. And um, the military was just a really beautiful path for us to put our intelligence and our energy in the right place. Wow. Um, thank you so much for sharing yeah. both of those beautiful stories. Uh, so Jen, I, let's talk about you now specifically. We've talked about your brothers. You, Jen, your background as an Air Force veteran mm -hmm. and special operations military spouse now, mm -hmm. it's that's a really unique combination. How have these experiences influenced your approach to providing care for veterans, law enforcement, and first responders, as well as their families through both Shields and Stripes and your five by five performance therapy? Oh, I mean, the answer to that is it, it really is everything. Um, my experience as a veteran, so I practiced occupational therapy while I was in the Air Force, um, and that gave me a unique perspective on what the challenges and what the strengths of the system are. Um, I was pulled to be an executive officer for a group commander at a hospital, which means I was provided this very unique opportunity to peer behind the curtains and really understand the system that is military medicine um, down to, you know, how they get their funding. And then from the spouse perspective, I, I really understand how spouses are left out of the conversation when it comes to um, health care. And that's a foul. Spouses should not be left out of any conversation, especially when we're asking people to make lifestyle changes. How can you how can you ask someone to make a lifestyle change without getting their partner involved in the conversation? It has to be it has to be a, a lifestyle change together. And often and it has to include children and the whole family unit. So, I mean, I, I had amazing experiences working with a lot of different people in the military. And a couple people stand out because I um, they were really struggling. And 
I had to be really creative in the way that I was approaching how to treat them. Um, and I think I just took that with me. It's like my philosophy is um, I really like finding loopholes and ways to yes. And I will bend any any rule that I can to find the way to yes, as long as it's helping someone. So, and, and that's what I, what that's what I feel like healthcare should be. It should be, it shouldn't be not, it should not be governed by money. It should not be governed by insurance companies telling us how to treat. It should be co governed by what works and how can we get this person the absolute best care mm -hmm. around period. Wow. That's be And I love how you said just then that just finding the yes, um, you know, and how we have to be advocates for our own care, advocates for our families, for our friends, for our, our patients, people we care for, people that we work with. So finding that yes uh, is so vital. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so the thing of it is, is that you are a certified mental health integrative medicine provider. Lot to say. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you share yeah. more? <laughs> Could you share more about this role and how it complements your work in occupational therapy and your mission to save lives and to foster happiness? Yeah, absolutely. It's actually the certification is actually a little bit um, different now. I forget what it's called. Um, it came down to a really stark realization very early on when I got out of the military and when I was in the military. So backing up a little bit, like I, I had this understanding from a very young age that no matter what discipline you are, if you're an MD, a, a registered dietitian, an OT, a PT, you don't have all the answers all the time. You can't. And how beautiful is it to get everybody's qualifications and education and perspective and resources in on one person's treatment? Um, so when I was in I really was trying to get all these different certifications just broaden my perspective and my qualifications to be able to treat people who I felt were my heroes. Mm -hmm. um, so I just needed, I just felt this like passion in this, this rush to just make sure that I was up to par with the, the people that I was treating. So when I got out, I found the certified um, mental health integrative certification and it is quite a process, but I think what that really helped me with was be a little bit more confident in OT's role with things like nutrition. Um, now, while we're not registered dietitians, we can absolutely help people inspire healthy eating habits, um, healthy eating patterns. How do you establish and you know prepare for food prep and all those kinds of things? And then understanding a little bit better um, things like gut health, which is a huge conversation these days and, um, natural supplementation. So it just offered me a little bit different of a perspective to allow me to kind of treat more holistically, which is what I felt and st still do feel that we, a lot of providers are missing. It's yeah. very easy for Western medicine to go straight to like a diagnosis and a medication when, that's not what our first steps should be. So that's where I was trying to fill the the knowledge gap. Oh, that's awesome. And I love that you see that and address that with your own career and the, your own work. Um, you know, what I also love is that you're not only a healthcare professional, but you are a yoga instructor. So question here is how do you incorporate the principles of yoga and mental wellness into your holistic approach to provide healthcare and therapy to those that you serve? That's a very good question. Um, it is integrated I mean, I love yoga and I'm not the best instructor. Let's just, I mean, I'm going to put it out there. There's so many, there's so many better instructors out there, but when it came to my practice, uh, man, there, I don't, there's a, there's this thing called operator syndrome and it talks about traumatic brain injury and blast injuries. And in my private business, I, I, I really only niche, I, I only treat special operators and one of their biggest challenges is the inability to be present with their families. And when I bring this subject up, I often see tears. And I'm talking about from like 
Green Berets, PJs, like people that don't cry. When I bring up, are you present with your family? Do you feel love? Do you feel happiness? That is like the, the biggest thing, one of the biggest things that they really emotionally struggle with. So yoga comes into play because a lot of these men um, just don't know how to sit. So I, I really value meditation and I value anything that um, requires someone to be in their own heads for a little bit mm. uh, and to be able to understand how to be present. Yoga I have found to be specifically helpful in these populations that don't know how to sit because I can say, okay, you're not sitting. I'm going to give you movement and we're going to try to activate present thoughts and we're going to practice being present with movement. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like my loophole, right? I told you I'm a master of loopholes. It's my loophole to get very, um, like, uh, uh, type A males mostly to meditate using movement. Is really, really awesome. Yes, you are the, can we just call you the queen of loopholes? Can we just add that title? I think we should. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so there is, there is one more question that I have for you today, and that is, Let's talk about families here. Um, many who sacrifice to serve our country have families uh, that sacrifice in their own way. And for this reason, the work that you do is dedicated not only to those who serve, but also to their families as well. Can you please share why this part of care, why this is so important and how it is that you that you support these families? Absolutely. I'll tell you a little story. I have a, I have a lot of friends in the community. And when I say in the community, I'm referring to, um, you know, mostly special operations community, military communities. I have a lot of friends that are spouses. Um, I, I'm having a girls' night tonight, and I invited five five girlfriends, and three of them said no because they don't have childcare, because their husband is out on a mission their husband had to last minute TDY or last minute deploy. Mm. Now, obviously the children are coming, but that's, that's beyond the point. So I also have a friend who texted me because she needed support because her husband had to leave within 12 hours to go support what's going on overseas. I, I can't say this enough. Like people, people often will kind of be like, Oh, the spouses are great too. Right. I can't tell you the strength um and i i can't we can't really accurately describe to to you know friends that aren't military spouses the strength required to be a military spouse like not only do you have to hold down the fort for your, your children you have to bring you have to be dad sometimes you have to learn how to snow blow and mow the lawn and do things that are, you know, not always within your purview when your husband is home. And military spouses so often come last. Even if they want to put themselves first, it's not the reality of the situation. The military spouse is the one that truly is the silent professional. Um, and they are the ones that are supporting this country just as much there is no role that is more important when we're talking about the military member and the military spouse they are both equally important um so you know being able to bring that spouse into the conversation and to say we serve you too we are here for you too is not only like it's not only something that we do it just to me is common sense it's not, it's not like above and beyond mm -hmm. in my perspective. It's just common sense. Like if we want to help people, you don't help the individual, you help the family unit. And that's very much an occupational therapy principle, but it's also just my understanding of what it is to be, to be a spouse myself. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Thank you for sharing that powerful, powerful perspective. And again, for your dedication to serving that 
Um, thank you so much for taking all this time to share these stories, to help all of us become a bit more aware now. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. I appreciate the questions. It was, it was nice to be able to kind of dig back and tell you how much of a troublemaker I used to be. And, <laughs> and a queen of loopholes that you have and become the over the years. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's wonderful. It's been really fun. Thank you for, for having me. Thank you for asking me those, those questions. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you. I appreciate it.